A question I get asked often is how I organize my homeschool books. So in today's video, I will tell you about 10 ways you can bind books at home. Hi, I'm Laura from monkeyamom.com, helping you make the best decisions for your homeschool with reviews and tips for homeschoolers. If you're new here, consider subscribing so you can get notified when I release new content. Being an international homeschooler is not easy because of so many aspects, but one of them is the textbook's high shipping rates. If you are looking to save money, the PDF versions of books and textbooks are the best way to go. The problem doesn't stop here though. After you've gotten and printed the books, how do you bind them at home? I know many homeschoolers just go to a print center and get their books printed and bound there, but this video is for those of you that don't have access to a print center or for various reasons reasons don't want to go that route. As a former crafter, I love doing things with my hands, and for me printing and binding books at home is an easy process, but I know not all parents are in my shoes, so I decided to present to you 10 ways that you can bind books at home, from the cheapest and quickest to the more expensive and time-consuming ones. The links to all the products are in the description below, and you can visit my blog post to get a better glimpse into the various types of binding. Number one, staple and tape. Everyone has a stapler around and this is a quick easy way to buy small booklets or even worksheets for your children. This method works best for small children that won't use the sheets or books multiple times. You just staple the pages and then apply some tape to cover the staples backs because they can hurt little fingers if not handled carefully. I made this booklet quickly and used washi tape to cover the pointy parts of the staples at the back. Number two, punch and tie. Another quick and easy available method with virtually no cost is hole punching the papers and binding them by tying them up. I use baker's twine because it's prettier. This method works best if you have a bunch of worksheets that you need to keep for later or even for temporary workbooks. Number three, binder clips. Binder clips are easy to get and they also come in pretty patterns and shapes like my favorites, the smiley clips. This method is great for binding artwork without having to punch holes through the pages or to just keep together papers in a weekly planner for the children, for example. Number four, binding bars. An elegant way to keep thin workbooks or temporary worksheets together is by using binding bars. I like using them to bind information sheets for my son, like this list of Roman numerals that he printed off a website. They can be easily removed and reused, and for added protection, you can add transparent covers. Number five, folders with prongs. A simple and efficient way to keep together books and workbooks are prong files. You can get these thin ones that would hold together an impressive number of 50 to 100 pages or so. But even if you want to store more pages, there are files like Japan Plus Zero to Max that extend to accommodate any number of pages up to 500. I recently discovered them and was blown away by how practical they are. I can keep adding various papers and pieces that my son is working on to this file as we go. You could even use these for splitting your semesters or subjects by adding plastic index sheets in between like I did here. Number 6. Ring Binders I know ring binders are popular among homeschoolers and we are currently using them, but for the past year or so, I can't seem to be able to keep them organized anymore. That's been a source of frustration for me. Seeing binder papers scattered and losing work has made me dread them. So from now on, we will avoid keeping them for our main work. Nevertheless, they are a great, quick and affordable way of binding and organizing your books and workbooks. Number seven pre-punched paper and plastic coils. Until recently, I had no idea that you can buy pre-punched papers. They aren't widely available in Europe, but you can get them from Amazon in the US. That saves you the trouble of using a binder machine and the cost of buying one. Just print the pages you need on pre-punched paper and use a spiral coil to bind it. Number eight, plastic comb binding. The cheapest solution of binding by using a machine is the plastic 
plastic comb binder, which is perfect for most homeschoolers that want to print and bind their workbooks and books at home. The machine isn't expensive and the plastic combs for binding are widely available in all sorts of colors and sizes. You will need to get various sizes of plastic combs for binding depending on the size of your final book. What I didn't like about these was the fact that if you use them on a daily basis, like for a workbook, pages tend to slip easily off the comb teeth. You can see here how easily they bend. I solved this issue by adding super glue to the comb's ends for the books I use more often. Another aspect that's not so great is that you cannot open these 360 degrees since there's a gap at the spine which makes it hard for children to bend it fully and write on it. Number 9. Coil and Spiral Binding A step up from the comb binding machine is the Coil and Spiral Binder. This is a machine we've upgraded to and I love our model because we can use both metal wires and plastic spirals to bind with it. You have to do it manually, but if you're looking specifically for a spiral binder, there are electrical ones that will do it all for you. Keep watching for the short clip at the end of this video to see how we use our comp and coil binders at home. And number 10 is thermal binding. The last method I will talk about in this video is thermal binding. The books you bind with this machine will look professional, but I don't know how practical they will be for a homeschooler. We haven't tested one yet, so I cannot comment on the benefits or downsides of owning one. So now that you've seen all the methods that you could use to bind books at home, let me show you how we use our two binding machines. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below. For the comb binder, I can only punch 12 pages at once. I can select the punch's depth and page's size. As I punch them, the pages will go on the comb teeth to keep them in place. When everything is ready, I'm taking a plastic comb of the right size for this book and just using the machine's comb section to open it up. I gently slide the pages in the comb's plastic teeth and close them. For the coil binder, I can use the front prongs to select or deselect the punches it will make. If I pull them out, those holes won't be punched. I can also adjust the paper size and the button on top is for wire coil size to close them up. I can punch 15 pages on this machine and there is no page holder, so I need to stack them nicely so the holes align. Once I'm done, I can use a wire coil or a plastic spiral to bind the book. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found some helpful information here. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Until next time, stay curious!